Can you get out of a firm real estate deal? That time between when you have an accepted offer and the closing date. What happens if you change your mind or something happens and you can't close? Can you just back out and get your deposit back? My name is Vilia Trulove. I'm a local Durham Region real estate agent and I'd love to hear from you. If you're moving to or within the Durham Region, you can set up an appointment through my calendar link, which is in the description below or you can send me a text or an email and we can get the process started. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. So I need to start by saying I'm not a lawyer, I'm a real estate agent. So if you find yourself in this situation or you're in it now, you need to call your lawyer now, yesterday actually. This video is for information purposes only, not for legal advice. A lawyer will know how to best guide you through this process and each situation will be a little bit different. The purpose of this specific video is to let people know how serious it is to make a written offer on a property. I've had a lot of people over the years, sellers, buyers, and even sometimes other real estate agents, not realize the seriousness of putting your signature on that offer. Some of you might be thinking, how do they not realize they're signing a contract that they can't just get out of? You'd be surprised, and that's why I'm making this video. So let's say you're house hunting, you find your dream home and you put in an offer. This could be a firm offer or it might have conditions on financing or home inspection. Regardless, you'll have to give a deposit with the offer that will stay in the listing brokerage's trust account until closing. If you want a more in-depth video about the home buying process, I've made that exact video so it's a good one to watch next. So. If you're satisfied with your financing and you complete your home inspection and all is well, you would sign a notice of fulfillment and you then have what's called a firm deal. So now it's a matter of waiting till closing. Maybe that closing date is in 30 days, maybe it's in 60 days, maybe 90. You don't officially own the house yet, but the seller can't sell it to anyone else during this time. It's promised to you. Now, what happens if you want to or have to try to get out of that deal in that time? So let's back up for just a second and first talk about what happens during the conditional period. This is the time when you've put in an offer that has conditions and you have to fulfill them. So it could be three, four, sometimes five banking days is, uh, in most normal situations. If it's a condition like the sale of a buyer's property, it's gonna be a longer condition. For both parties to be released from the deal and the deposit returned, a mutual release needs to be signed by both the buyer and the seller. I've had many buyers before being educated about how this works, think that the conditions are a free for all, walk away from the home type of situation. And that's actually not the case. First off, it depends on how the conditions are written. Are they written completely in favor of the buyer? Not all of them are. And even if they're written in favor of the buyer, they're still not meant to be used as a, I changed my mind, so I'm walking away type of scenario. So I'm gonna give you an example. I had a situation where I was working for the seller and we accepted an offer that was conditional on financing. It was a two day financing condition. Near the end of the second day, the buyer's agent called me and told me that they wouldn't be sending over the notice of fulfillment for the financing condition unless we agree to give them the washer and dryer. Now, this washer and dryer were very expensive and were not initially included in the offer that was agreed upon just a couple of days before. The buyer was okay with them not being included on offer night and was now trying to renegotiate by holding the financing waiver hostage. So as a listing agent, if I didn't understand how these conditions work and said, oh my goodness, yes, we'll absolutely give you the washer and dryer, I could have potentially lost my seller a lot of money. Instead, I told him that if he attempted to use the financing condition to try to change the offer and not in the way that it was intended, which is to get your financing, that my seller would have the right to hold the buyer's deposit. They could sue the buyers for that deposit and sell the property to somebody else. So in this case, we had that fulfillment within 30 minutes and the property closed a month later. It's very important that buyers understand that if you truly cannot get your financing, that's what the condition is for. Yes, that becomes kind of a waste of everybody's time. You should have had a full mortgage pre-approval 
before you even went house hunting at all and before you put in that conditional offer. But stuff does happen. And the home itself also does need to be approved by the bank and an issue could have come up uh, with that with that part of it. So maybe the bank doesn't agree with uh, doesn't agree that you paid market value, for example. Um, the home inspection condition might end up being a little bit more subjective, let's say, but it's still not supposed to be used when you've just had a change of mind. There have been instances where buyers try to get out of a deal without actually even doing the home inspection and sellers can refuse to sign the mutual release. There have also been situations where the sellers have not agreed with the buyer's analysis of the house and did not agree that they should have been able to walk away because of the results of the home inspection. In the case I heard of, they did not release the deposit. They took the buyers to court and they actually won. Like I mentioned earlier, the wording of the condition comes into play here. So all I would say is that they're meant to be used in good faith. They're meant to be used for the purpose that they were intended. And that's how a buyer should take them. You shouldn't say, oh, well, we'll just put in an offer. And because it's conditional, I'll then decide if I really want the house. Because if you end up with a seller that isn't willing to just let you walk away from the deal, you might end up with best case scenario, a really big headache, worst case scenario, finding yourself in court. Uh, you also want to look at the wording of your conditions very carefully. Now, once those conditions are removed, either waived or fulfilled, like I said, you then have a firm deal. So what if something happens? Somebody loses their job, or it turns out that they didn't actually qualify for the mortgage that they thought they did, or the prices went down significantly between the time that they purchased and the closing date. This has happened actually in more scenarios than you can imagine over the, um, over the last few years. So what do you do? There have been times where the buyer has approached the seller with this and the seller allows them to back out and releases their deposit. Sometimes it's a true case of bad timing with a job loss and a seller's willing to say, no worries. This is in no way guaranteed though. And the seller situation is gonna come into play here. How easy will it be for them to resell the house for the same amount you paid or more? Did they buy a house and need this money to close themselves? There's a domino effect when this happens. If the seller doesn't want to just say, no problem, I'll resell, then what happens? Well, they can sue you. Yes, for the deposit, but that's not all. They can resell the property to someone else. And if you bought that house for, let's say, $1.2 million, and the new buyer only paid 950,000, they can also sue you for the difference in sale price, as well as other costs incurred. It happens and the sellers can often win big. So as a buyer, you should probably do everything in your power to close on that property. Now, as a buyer, how do you try to avoid this situation? First, know that you're signing a contract under seal. It's a big deal and not something that should be taken lightly. If you're not sure about anything in the contract, speak with your agent and you can also speak with your lawyer in advance. Many people don't go to the lawyer until after they've purchased, but there's nothing stopping you from talking to them beforehand if you want to. Another very important thing to do before you go house hunting is make sure that your finances are solid. Don't just allow a mortgage broker to ask you a couple questions and then say, yeah, you should be good for this amount. You need to get a full mortgage pre-approval and they need to verify your income, your down payment and your credit. During the conditional period, you ideally want the bank to do the appraisal if there's one necessary so that you're not hearing from them a week before closing saying the numbers don't line up. And when it comes to purchase price, know your market. Make sure that you're paying fair market value and not well over, or you could have issues with the bank approving the loan. If you're not 100% sure if you want the home, don't put in an offer and assume that you can just change your mind. Wait until you're certain this is the home you want. For sellers, you ideally want as big of a deposit as you can get. Finally, work with a qualified real estate agent who can help guide you through this process. I know some of this sounds really scary and it's looking at a lot of worst case scenarios. Most deals do close with both a happy buyer and seller, and a real estate agent can help to make sure that you get there. Reach out with any questions you have or book an appointment through my calendar 
and we can talk about your specific situation. Thanks so much for watching.